The internet is dead, and nobody on it actually exists. What if I told you that the internet as we know it is not what it seems? Even though it started off as a place for niche communities to interact with amongst themselves, the internet has evolved in many ways, and some of these ways might have terrifying implications. What if every picture, video, and post you have interacted with is the work of highly trained artificial intelligence with the intent to distract and manipulate you? This is called the dead internet theory, and today we are going to explore just how likely and dangerous this could be for the future of humanity, possibly turning the digital world into a complex matrix in order to keep us distracted and compliant. Originating from the dark corners of the internet, this unsettling theory is backed by many patterns and thought-provoking evidence that might even convince you. This is the dead internet theory, and the story of how artificial reality may take over the internet, eventually leading to the total collapse of society. The field of AI has seen steady progress throughout its brief history. While for many years it seemed like just another science fiction technology, we are now able to observe many practical and impractical changes AI has already brought into our lives. But to someone who doesn't know much about AI, it can be hard to understand exactly what makes it so special. You see, the human brain is capable of executing anywhere from 100 billion to 1 billion billion operations per second. However, these operations are split between the many things that keep us alive, the functioning of our organs, the moving of our body parts, and even possibly the processes that give rise to consciousness. As an AI without a living body and without a consciousness, you would be able to dedicate all 100 billion of these operations to any process of your choice. While our brain is undeniably more efficient at solving some problems than any computer, there are even more problems that we cannot even begin to wrap our heads around. And this is where advanced artificial intelligence intelligence comes in to do the heavy lifting. A great example of this in our modern world is the explosion of AI tools made to automate one or more steps in any workflow process. Unfortunately, alongside the power given to us with these tools, we see a massive decrease in authenticity. Some programs such as DALI and Midjourney are able to create original high quality images from a single text prompt. Others such as Amazon's Alexa are helping to connect every part of your life to a single network. Network. One of the most popular and potentially the most influential AI apps is none other than ChatGPT. On its release in 2022, ChatGPT saw major success, amassing 100 million active monthly users in just two months. To put this into perspective, this number is equal to over 1% of the entire Earth's population in two months. While initially, ChatGPT's purpose was to make knowledge and learning more widespread, and even to take the industry of search engines to the next level, something that hasn't been done since the introduction of Google in 1998. However, despite these ambitions, after its release, we would see many users of ChatGPT choose to use the AI-generated content in less ethical ways. If you are anything like me, then you have likely noticed a slight shift in your experiences with the internet since the introduction of these AIs. A shift from the feeling of freedom and expression to that of suspicion and shallowness. But this kind of AI abuse is not limited to ChatGPT. Nowadays, almost anyone has the ability to create an AI capable of mimicking human behavior in one or more ways. However, as with many other technologies, it is possible the government has had access for much longer than the public. What if I told you that for decades, these same tactics have already been in place, and in the pursuit of embracing the internet, we all failed to know in 2022, business magnate Elon Musk placed an offer to purchase the social media giant Twitter for 44 billion US dollars. During this process, many studies were done to look into the amount of bot activity on the site, as Musk rightfully doubted Twitter's previous claim that less than 5% of monetizable users were bots. After being commissioned by Musk, the software company Cybra conducted two studies and estimated around 12% of Twitter accounts were bots. Not only this, but these 12% of users accounted for over 30% of all content on the platform. This caused the deal to be put on hold for several months before finally coming to a close. Although it is no surprise that Elon Musk would be skeptical about the volume of computer-generated traffic on social media. Besides, just seven years prior, he was heavily involved 
involved with the AI tech startup OpenAI, the same company responsible for none other than ChatGPT. But what about some of the other social media platforms which have billions of monthly active users? The sad truth is that no matter where you look, it is the exact same story. For years, Facebook has been the target of many claims of inflated user stats in order to draw in more advertisers and investors. There has also been an apparent increase in click farms on the platform. A click farm is essentially one or more users interacting with content on the platform at a large scale in order to be compensated. While there is no direct evidence that Facebook is truly guilty of these claims, it would also be naive to believe that they are completely clueless. Instagram is another one of these platforms that has had a significant amount of activity. Ariana Grande has a resounding 194 million followers on Instagram. However, it is reported that 25% of these followers are fake accounts. That is around 50 million fake followers. Even YouTube has faced problems with AI-generated content, having to make multiple adjustments to their monetization policies, as there has been massive progress in AI voiceover and editing software, and by mixing this with the likes of ChatGPT, some creators have been pumping out loads of content with little to no effort. The bottom line is that these are the platforms that make up the current internet, and we already have proof that there is AI activity everywhere. What about the rest of the internet? For example, search engines or websites. Well, unfortunately, even these sites are not safe from the dead internet theory. Have you ever noticed how you get shown articles throughout the year that are all basically the same? For instance, blue moons or blood moons or buck moons or flower moons. You get the idea. I mean, I mean, in our busy day-to-day -day lives, we experience lots of different things. The moon, however, is something that remains rather constant. So why is it that we are constantly led to believe otherwise? What about when you are surfing the web and you come across a link that doesn't work? I'm not referring to a link that you cannot click on or is simply misspelled. Instead, these are called dead links, which direct you to sites that are permanently unavailable. As the internet grows and massive domains get moved around, a process known as link rot occurs, and we see an influx of dead links. Imagine if these links were the references on a research article, and without them, the article could be rendered completely unreliable. These are the sides of the dead internet theory that are important to note, mainly as supporting evidence. However, this is only half of the story, and the truth is, it only gets darker from here. In 2019, a man was taken into custody after allegedly using fake social media bot accounts to bully children into sending him money. He would have these accounts reach out to these children and make threats towards them and their families in order to blackmail them into sending him money. After a six month trial, he would be charged with nothing. That is because I made this story up to show how dangerous AI generated content can be. Imagine an AI with writing and storytelling skills that are much better than mine, ones that even rival the most experienced humans. By creating stories such as this and spreading them throughout the internet, they would be able to create mass hysteria at alarming rates. But some AI are much more powerful, and instead of just creating false stories, they can create images and videos of real humans that are almost indistinguishable from reality. Take a look at this deepfake video. You might be able to tell the difference, but you can probably see why most people can't. Scary, right? Could you imagine what problems could arise due to the use of this fraudulent technology? The problem that best aligns with the dead internet theory is that which involves the widespread use of deepfake technology. Once people get used to seeing deepfakes more and more, they will learn to be more skeptical with the content they interact with on the internet. Hopefully. However, there might come a point where deepfake technology has perfected the art of replicating reality. And if the technology is mainstream enough, then it is possible that the entire internet will become completely AI generated content. Would you want to go on the internet knowing that you might be experiencing something that is completely artificial or dead? You might be surprised that most people would answer yes to this question. After all, we have already explored how this is already happening on the biggest social media platforms, and that still doesn't doesn't stop them from being popular. This is the main essence of the dead internet theory. It is something that is very possible in the future with the use of technologies such as deepfake AI. So who says it couldn't already be happening on the current internet and we just haven't noticed yet? You could choose to reject this hollow internet, but at this point it may be so ingrained with our reality it may be far too late.
In October of 2021, Mark Zuckerberg announced the rebranding of Facebook to the technology company Meta. He did this in hopes of being given the reins to the creation of the metaverse. Whether or not this was successful is debatable, but that is a topic for another time. First, let's talk about what this metaverse is and why you should even care. The metaverse is defined as a hypothetical iteration of the internet as a single, universal, and immersive virtual world that is facilitated by the use of virtual virtual reality and augmented reality. While this might seem like a lot to take in, it is actually very simple. A completely artificial experience entirely separated from physical reality, where the line between possible and impossible is eternally blurred. One where through the use of virtual and augmented reality, you would be able to experience anything you could imagine. This seems like it could be a utopia, where the harsh realities and circumstances that some of us so unfairly find ourselves in could become a thing of the past where things like universe simulations and consciousness uploading is possible. But remember what I told you before. There are companies trying to take charge in the creation of the metaverse, meaning they would have the power to mold it to their liking. And unfortunately, it is improbable that this corporate metaverse would be anything like the aforementioned digital utopia. Since Mark has already made his intentions clear to us, let's use him as the antagonist of this scenario. In the recent years, there have been many lawsuits involving Facebook's privacy policies surrounding the storing and security of private user data. This data is collected by advanced AI algorithms that have the only purpose of finding out everything about you. There are claims that after the collection, Facebook then sells this data to brokers and other companies. Imagine if by joining the metaverse, you are basically handing over any and all data surrounding your personal identity. While the selling of this data is already overstepping many boundaries, you might be shocked to hear that this isn't even the worst part. You see, the one one thing that sets AI and a league completely separate from humans is data analysis. By feeding deep learning algorithms large amounts of seemingly unintelligible data, it will find patterns and in turn teach itself based on this data. This could mean determining your height, age, gender, and even shoe size just based on how you move around and interact with your environment while wearing a VR headset. I know this just seems ridiculous, but this is really how this AI works. And it might not be possible now, but there's no reason to believe that it won't be one day. After these companies who control the metaverse have collected enough data to know more about you than even you ever could, it is time to completely change the status quo one individual at a time. Before we fully dive into this rabbit hole, let's come back to the present. With the complete takeover of the internet, society has been met with many challenges. This is mainly due to the rapid progression of technology and the slow development of the human psyche. For hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years, humans have developed the need to band together. And one way that we do this is by alienating other groups. If you lived in a small tribe thousands of years ago, it is likely that you would live with some people that you didn't get along with too well. But when in the face of battle with another tribe, it is these same people who you would fight alongside. Because of this, you would learn to tolerate these individuals due to your common objective, survival. This is called a social filter bubble. But how is this reflected in the modern age through the internet? Well, there's a concept known as confirmation bias, and in essence, it is the interpretation of new concepts and ideas based on one's already existing beliefs. Think about if someone told you that the sky is red. You might look outside to check, but odds are that upon first hearing this, you feel that you are being lied to. While not many people argue about the color of the sky, there are many other things that they do argue about. Things like politics and social standards. The AI algorithms that run the social media platforms that we use have gotten really good at showing us content that we enjoy, but even more importantly than that, content that we agree with. This content fuels our confirmation bias and further strengthens our dogma. You could say the people in charge of what content we consume are the people in charge of our beliefs. So now that you understand both confirmation bias and social filter bubbles, we can finally jump into the final implications of the dead internet theory as it pertains to the metaverse. Imagine if you were in charge of a company that has complete dominance over the metaverse. You have access to data describing all of the users down to their toothpaste preferences, and you are in almost total control over their beliefs and opinions. By controlling every experience 
experience people have in the metaverse, you can lead them to follow whatever narrative you wish. With the use of AI, you could create fake friends for people to interact with and by abusing their confirmation bias, convince them to partake in otherwise irregular behavior. You could control every article they read, every video they watch, every picture they see. This is truly an authoritarian wet dream, and hopefully by now you have started to see the dark reality of the metaverse. This future is not determined, and there is hope, of course. But as it stands now, if nothing changes, then one day sooner than you think, the internet will be dead. This has been the journey of the dead internet theory. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you made it this far into the video, then comment metaverse to confuse everybody else. If theories about our reality really interest you, then make sure to watch this video about a possible theory of everything.